Good afternoon, evening, morning, <laughs> if you're watching with me right now on this lovely August afternoon. Wonderful to see you. This is Deborah Roth from Spirited Living, back with another Inner Goddess Team video. And I hear almost every week, um, I've been doing this since ooh, almost exactly two years ago, August of 2020. And hello, Bobette, wonderful to see you. And I, I, I'm I, gonna start doing other ones too, but I always continue to do these goddess videos because I believe so passionately that all the qualities of the divine feminine are what we so desperately need in our world today. Cooperation, uh, collaboration, compassion, empathy, using our intuition, honoring nature. All of those you can see more about um, when you look at this video on, on, iTube, on iTube, on YouTube, there'll be a little eye in the corner, and then you can click and find out a whole lot more about the Divine Feminine. Um, and if you're watching this on uh, Instagram or, or Facebook Live, then, um, then go to YouTube tomorrow. <laughs> if you want more information, because I'll include I always try and give a little bit of left brain stuff, balancing the left brain, right brain, intuitive with the left brain, um, linear, factual stuff, because this stuff, as you, if you've, if you've been with me for um, at least one of these, know how much this fascinates me, both from a spiritual standpoint, but also from a, a mythological standpoint and an archetypal standpoint. So, and this week, um, sim similarly to what I did uh, the last time, which was actually two weeks ago, I'm celebrating uh, a, a festival, uh, another Roman festival. No, the other one was a Greek festival. Sorry, it was for um, Aphrodite. It was Aphrodisia Festival. Um, and interestingly, Venus, who was the, the Roman counterpart of Aphrodite, um, also had some major celebrations, um, probably her two big ones. One was in April, uh, was honoring wine, and, and the other wine celebrating one that, that really brought in uh, Venus was, was this one coming up on August 19th, two days from now, called the Vinalia Rustica. I don't speak Italian, I hope that's close enough. And wine was it was a staple in Roman households, in Roman society, in all the different eras of, of Roman history. And she, Venus, one of the things that fascinated me about this, I mean, Venus is one of probably one of the most well-known goddesses, one of the most um, uh, beloved faces of the divine feminine. And, and I actually, she was one of the very first Inner Goddess Team videos that I did back in like October of 2020. What was fascinating to me about this is that before she was a big famous Greek Roman, you know, up on the Pantheon and, and honored with all the major gods and goddesses, she was a simple garden goddess in the earliest stages of, of the, not the Roman Empire, didn't become the Roman Empire till later on, but of, of ancient history in Rome. So we know her nowadays, um, as did the, uh, the people in, in Rome, as the goddess of love and beauty and sexuality and fertility. The fertility piece really kind of harkens back to that notion of uh, the fact that she was the goddess of the gardens, which of course would include vines and specifically grape vines, which were so, so important to the Romans both in terms of their personal lives, but also it was sacramental. They used it for all their major sacred celebrations as well. So, and, and, and interestingly, the, it wasn't until I think it was like 510 BCE um, that, that everyone was allowed to drink wine. Before then, there was a very serious statute that you had to be a man over the age of, I think it was 35. Let me see if I can find it probably not gonna be able to find a queen, yeah, 35, um, to be able to drink wine. And literally, if a woman imbibed even a sip, she could be executed, a little crazy. So the rustica part of Vinalia rustica is of the people, is, is rustic, of, of con the country celebration of wine in the vineyards. So what we're celebrating this week, and what I invite you to do is if you have a garden, 
And if you don't, if you've got house plants, and if you don't have that, then go out and find um, find a beautiful nature, natural place somewhere with flowers, with things that are growing, with things that are lush and fertile this this time of year, and and do a little blessing for Venus. Um, I found this wonderful. Apparently, in the in the uh, Middle Ages, maybe the 18, 17, 1800s, she was honored in um in england she was shown as the the goddess the uh, garden goddess that she is she, there are images of her in all uh, all kinds of gardens around the english countryside still to this day and that's that's a very beautiful little statue of her in the middle of a garden um we know other images of her rising from the sea and but the mythology that is connected most to this celebration the venalia uh, rustica is not, you know, goddess of uh, uh, Venus rising from the sea, but rather um, the, the Trojan hero Aeneas was, um, he was beseeching Jupiter, the, you know, the, the king of the gods, to help him vanquish an, an enemy um, who had this interesting name who I'd never heard of in Greek mythology um, or Roman mythology, Mesentius. And and he said that he would dedicate all of his, um, the, the wine from the next vintage to Jupiter if Jupiter would help vanquish this enemy. Jupiter apparently signed on, um, and apparently this Mesentius um, wanted to keep all his wine for himself, so he was, he was gone. Jupiter took, took care of him, and from that point forward, all of the ancestors of Aeneas made sure that they had this celebration to honor Jupiter for saving their lineage, basically. Um, and so how Venus fits into all that, and, and it was interesting to hear all these male, of course, um, writers, ancient writers, d debating whether, whether Venus should actually be included in this celebration, when it was pretty clear from, and I won't go, I won't bore you. I thought it was interesting, but not everybody does. With the with the writings from some of these different um, Roman, um, you know, Pliny the Elder, and you know some famous people like that, that talked about um, how she was honored on this day, and her temples were were cleaned and cleared um, in Rome. So it definitely appears that that she was connected with this day and. While the, the grapes weren't harvested until the fall, this was a day, this um, Vinalia Rustica happens on August 19th. The other one was in April. I guess that was a, a different one. Um, but it, on that day, uh, just a bunch of grapes and, and apparently a sacred lamb, which was supposed to be connected to Venus, were sacrificed to Jupiter so that the weather over the next several months would would be perfect and amenable to allow um, to allow the the whole vintage to allow the whole crop to flourish uh, until harvest time, and that's it. That's the the growth aspect of it and the the weather piece of it. Jupiter wasn't necessarily a weather god, but that's where the fertility piece that that uh, this the these early embodiments. Um, ep uh, epithets that were called of Venus. She had like 20 of them, different names of hers. You know, Venus, um, let's see, the one that she, let's see, the one that she, but that was connected with this one in particular um, in her earliest form was Venus Obsequens. Um, and kitchen gardens, uh, market gardens, vineyards everywhere were dedicated to her. And so clearly this was something, because the wine and because the vineyards were so connected to the land and to gardens that's why we honor her so i do not have a chant for venus however um and i, I would really encourage you if this fascinates you, all this kind of stuff fascinates you as it as it does me please comment please like I, you know like this um both here and on youtube um, please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're not, and you'll, you'll know when all these things are coming out as well. Um, and, and, and for this one, I always have some kind of call to action, some invitation for you. Take this poem that I'm going to read, read it, honor, honor and toast the growing things around, maybe your very own personal ones in your garden, but the growing things, again, including houseplants, um, and then just this lush, beautiful time of year as we head towards um, the 
uh, the, the real harvest time. We celebrated the first harvest, the beginning of August. Now we're moving towards the second harvest in September. So just kind of sit back and, and take this in as, as a prayer, as a meditation to gardens and to Venus. It's a beautiful poem uh, called Flowers of the Heart by Mark Gentile. And I have a whole, <laughs> have a whole file of garden poems that I use for my wedding ceremonies that I do uh, for couples that are married in gardens, and this is one of them. The garden of love bids tending, so often it pains us to render its due. When drought offers threat and water is scarce and lovers forget what it means to be true. Yet love like a garden rewards us. The flowers of the heart are worth all the pain. How else can we reap that beautiful yield with little to use, to lose, and with so much to gain? When I think of where we first started with just the horizon to capture our view, my eyes now behold what a garden can be with effort and love to carry it through. Isn't that beautiful? So that embodies really all of the aspects, I think, of Venus, her earliest ones as a garden goddess and her, the ones that we're more familiar with of her being a, a goddess of love and beauty. So go out into your world. I invite you this week and the next couple days, but really call on, on Venus as the garden goddess whenever you're planting in the spring too. She has another Vinalia <laughs> um, celebration in, in April. But as I always say, you can call on any of these goddesses all year round and particularly um, embrace them at this time and, and open up, see if it feels like someone that you wanna add, um, an archetype, a, a femme type as I call them, these divinely feminine archetypes to your inner goddess team. Thanks so much for joining me and go out and celebrate Venus and your gardens. Namaste.